Yes, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and to uh, welcome you all to this conference. Uh, it's a crowded room, which makes me very happy indeed. But uh, to be quite honest, I'm not that surprised because I think the topics that we're going to discuss today and tomorrow are uh, topics of the time, really uh, hot and, and, and burning issues uh, that we really need to address. Um, I would like to welcome you all, uh, especially to Saltsjöbaden, uh, this community that uh, the conference is situated in. Uh, it started out, I think, in the late 19th century, 1890s, uh, by um, as a, an upper-class residential area. Uh, a lot of upper-class people uh, started to build their homes here. And, uh, if you get the opportunity, don't miss taking a walk around Salzsjöbaden and, and look at some of the buildings uh, that are truly, truly magnificent in, in this area. Um, and also, I think Salzsjöbaden, at least to people of my generation and older, is, is famous for uh, the Salzsjöbaden of Tal, um, the Salzsjöbaden Accord, which was a deal that was struck between the major labor organization at the point at, 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 in 1938 and the Swedish employers organization. I think if I'm correct that this uh, deal is sti actually still in effect. It's still valid today and it, it sort of stipulates that what happens on the labor market should be uh, something that is uh, dealt with by the two parties, the employers and the workers unions. Uh, and the government should not be a part of that process. Very important deal that has meant a lot for modern history, I, I believe, of, of, of Sweden. Also, on more of a personal note, this place is uh, quite emotional for me, actually. Uh, if you look outside, you see the beautiful view of the, of the water. Uh, some years ago, I was out there on a boat and I took part in, in spreading the ashes of a young man right out there that I had never met before in my life. And I want to share this story with you this morning because I think it holds two points that, that are somehow maybe relevant for this conference. So I'm going to take you back in time a few years, uh, maybe five years or so. At, at that point in time, I was the director general of the National Historical Museums in Stockholm. And we were organizing public activities for the visitors at the National Historical Museum. And, and one activity that we organized was the excavation, a genuine excavation of part of the courtyard within the museum. So we brought the public in and they excavated and they found some shards of glass and some buttons and stuff, you know, but it was a real excavation. And after that excavation was done, we had a nice pit inside the courtyard of the museum. And we decided to, to do the opposite. We decided to have an incavation. We decided to have people come in and donate objects that they wanted to place in the pit and send them sort of to the future opposite of an excavation, an incavation. And it was magnificent. People were coming to the museum and they were donating objects, uh, all kinds of objects that, that I, I believe really s s tells a story about our time. All was fine until one day in the mail came a padded brown envelope with a small plastic bag inside of it and, and, a net, uh, and a letter. And the plastic bag contained uh, the burnt ashes or parts of the burnt ashes of a young man. It was a Canadian man, it turned out, by reading the note. A young Canadian man had died in a motorcycle accident in, in another part of the world, I think it was in Asia somewhere. And his, this young man, he, he loved to travel all over the world. And so his family and his friends, they decided to, uh, to honor this man by burying 
parts of his ashes in different parts of the world. He loved traveling. He was all over the place. So they'd heard about the incubation at the National Historical Museum, and they sent a brown padded envelope with parts of his ashes to the museum to be incubated, to be placed within, uh, within this pit. Of course, this was kind of strange to us. We have a legislation in Sweden, you know, we cannot bury ashes of people just, just anywhere. So we, we, after a lot of discussion and thinking, we got in touch with the state county administration and they advised us, no, you cannot do that. We cannot bury people in, in museum courtyards. That's, that's not uh, 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 congruent with the, with, the, with the law. But what you can do, of course, is to, to uh, spread his ashes uh, during a ceremony at, at sea. And we had some contacts with his family and, and with his friends, and they thought, well, this was a good idea. So we, that's what we did. We ended up taking a boat and, and spreading the ashes. And, and very nice ceremony just outside of here. So this place is, is still rather emotional to me. I haven't been here since. Uh, and, and, but coming here today, I, I think uh, this story may hold two points, like I said, uh, that perhaps can relate to today's conference. I think the first point would be, we always have to expect the unexpected. It's a complex world. It's moving really fast. Things happen today that we're really not used to, to dealing with. Uh, we have to be expecting the unexpected. And this, of course, was very obvious for me, being a director of a museum that had a hundred tons of bones within the collections. And we knew everything about how to deal with those bones. But then all of a sudden, a few grams of bones come by the mail and we're all baffled. We don't know what to do. What we're going to do with this? What What's the ethical way of, of dealing with this? So expect the unexpected would be the first lesson. And the second lesson, I think, would be that heritage matters. Heritage matters to people, to all of us as individuals, as communities, as, as groups in society. Heritage can hold enormous financial value, obviously, but, but the symbolic value of heritage uh, can be so much greater and I think in today's world again where everything is changing and moving rapidly I think the demand for people to be a part of how heritage is, is valued and how heritage is handled is also increasing and this is also I think an important lesson for us here today how do we deal with this complex world when it's not only up to the experts anymore to decide what is heritage and how we deal with it so those were the two major points I wanted to lay before you uh, as a starting point for, for, this, uh, for this conference, for this two-day conference. I'm sure that you will have a, a fantastic two days discussing risk management, discussing the value of heritage, obviously, risk prevention, all, of course, for the benefit of society. So thank you very much and welcome to Satchabodan.